No mega project on planet Earth is built without a reason. Whether it's a building meant to inspire the masses and bring pride to a nation as it rises taller than any other on Earth, an aircraft finely tuned to fly on the edge of space now run anything that might pursue it, or a glamorous, gaudy, planned city meant to stroke the ego of whatever dictator foots the bill. Humanity we don't build just for the sake of building. So if there is a record to be broken, if there is a human achievement that can yet be surpassed, there's going to have to be a reason compelling enough to make it happen. And on today's episode of Mega Projects, we're going to introduce a one such record-breaking beast, a behemoth that holds the distinction of being the biggest, heaviest vehicle ever made. It's not a bulldozer that can bring down mountains. It's not a gargantuan battle tank that lets its nation win wars just by speed speaking its name. And it's not an aircraft, it's not a rocket, not even a space station. It's a ship that is so gigantic, so utterly massive, that when it cuts through the water, there is truly nothing that can compare. And while it does exist, why did humanity endeavor to build such a record-breaking machine? And the answer, dear viewer, is oil. And the creation in question is the pioneering spirit. In order to understand the mega project that is pioneering spirit, we first have to understand another of humanity's creations, one that is as important to our modern world as it is routinely forgotten or overlooked, and that would be the oil rig, or as it's better understood, the offshore oil production platform. Oil rigs are not the prettiest pieces of construction in the world, and not by a long shot. They're hulking expanses of steel, concrete, and very little else, usually with cranes hanging off the side. But they're important nonetheless, dredging up immense amount of offshore oil without which a good proportion of human machinery would just grind to a halt. There are a few kinds of oil rigs, some that rest on pillars that connect all the way to the seabed, some that float and are anchored to the seabed with mooring lines, and some attached to slender towers that can stretch and bend back and forth with the currents of the sea. Now, I'm not going to get into the details on how exactly they work, but in order to understand their relationship to the pioneering spirit, we only need to understand one other thing about them, which is that they are a nightmare to build and assemble on the open ocean. If you're going to create such a thing out in the middle of night, Nowhere, you've got to transport all the materials, all the people, all the construction equipment, and all the other crap that you need out to basically the middle of nowhere and support an operation for months or even years until this great big thing can be constructed. But all the way back in the mid 1980s, the technical director of a company called All Seas had an idea. All Seas is a Swiss company that had been founded just recently, working with undersea oil pipelines, but the idea that the company had was related to a problem that existed above the surface of the water. Wouldn't it be nice, All Seas thought, if companies could construct their oil rigs while still on land and then put the entire fully built hunk of metal onto a ship, steam out to the middle of the ocean, and simply plop down the oil rig wherever it needed to go. It would be way more convenient for everybody, and even the highest price tag a company like All Seas could conceive of would still be a hell of a lot better than the cost of an oil company trying to build their rig in the usual way. In 1987, All Seas laid claim to the idea and pledged publicly that one day they would build it and then, well, they sat on the idea for 20 years and went and did some other stuff. But even the designs that All Seas had on paper were pretty impressive, and every so often, a new group of technical engineers would take a look at the plans and make some tweaks. And they knew the thing would have to be truly huge in order to hold the oil rigs they carried and to literally have enough space for them on board. At first, they'd envisioned building a gigantic catamaran-style ship, taking two massive super tankers connected together across part of the twin hulls while leaving a large slot in between them near the forward half of the ship, the bow, where it could pull up to a platform and put down the oil rig while a complex system of ballast would keep the entire apparatus from capsizing while it held a several thousand ton rig out on the end of a crane. Around 2004, the plan changed from joining together two super tankers to building a single huge catamaran Moran hull from scratch so that they could include some advanced bells and whistles that would make the whole thing work a lot better. Then, in 2007, All Seas announced that they were ready to take the leap. They were going to build their great ship, a twin-hulled platform that could install and remove entire oil rigs in one go. 
Their creation would be capable of incredible feats of strength, with the lifting system at the bar of the ship capable of lifting 48,000 metric tons of weight, and the lift system at the stern capable of picking up another 25,000 metric tons. The ship would also be able to lay undersea pipe in keeping with all seas primary emission, and it would perform that task at depths of up to 13,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. It would be named the Pieter Schultz, after the father of all seas owner, a man named Edward Harima. Except, actually, it wouldn't. Because it turned out that the real life Pieter Schultz had very much been a bit of a Nazi serving in the Waffen SS during World War II. A name change in February 2015 would give the ship its more enduring moniker, the pioneering spirit, and by then, the thing was in the water. After a several year long assembly process joined by South Korean shipbuilding giant Daewoo, that's Hanwha Ocean today, the ship was deemed ready to set sail by late 2014. In November of that year, it departed from South Korea, and two months later, it arrived in Rotterdam to be commissioned. Its lift system was installed, it passed all its final checks, and in August 2016, the pioneering spirit set sail on the job for the very first time. Even among its own category of global superships, the pioneering spirit is something to behold. From tip to tail, if you will, it measured a full length of 477 meters or 1,565 feet with its beams extended. When measuring just the ship itself, it's the third longest ship in the world, after only the Seawise Giant and the Emma Maersk. It claims a breadth of 124 meters, that's 407 feet, at the parts of the structure in which the two catamaran hulls join together, while the catamarans themselves are each a little over 30 meters, or about 100 feet wide. The Pioneering Spirit's central slot measures 122 meters long by 59 meters wide, or 400 by 194 feet, making it more than able to service most of the world's oil rigs. As we said previously, the ship's topside lift capacity is a full 48,000 metric tons. That's 22 times the weight of the London Eye, 200 times that of the Statue of Liberty, almost five times the weight of the Eiffel Tower, or if you really like real units of measurement, that's 326,496 Shaquille O'Neal's. A maximum draft of the ship displaces a full million tons of water, making it the heaviest or highest displacement vehicle ever created. That's 19 times the displacement of the Titanic, by the way, and nearly 10 times that of the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier. Despite its incredible size, the pioneering spirit is a mover when it wants to be. From port to port, it can hit a maximum speed of 14 knots when at its transit weight, that's 60 miles per hour or 26 kilometers an hour. With a maximum draft of 27 meters and a minimum draft of 10 meters, it's both too deep in the water and too wide around the midsection to squeeze through waterways like the Suez Canal or the St. Lawrence Seaway. And if faced with the prospect of making it through the Panama Canal, both the crew of the pioneering spirit and the Panamanian government would probably have a collection nervous breakdown. But powered by 13 Rolls-Royce diesel-electric azimuth thrusters with 360-degree rotation, it's got more than enough power to get itself to any place where it can fit without scraping the seabed. And if you're wondering about its price tag, well, it's 2.4 billion. Beyond its physical dimensions, the pioneering spirit is impressive for other reasons too. It can support a full crew of up to 571 people sleeping two to a cabin, uh, with more than enough hands on deck to participate in complex oil rig installation and pipeline operations. Crews typically hail from over 20 different nationalities, comprising three teams a marine crew, a construction crew, and an engineering crew. The people on board live and work there for five weeks at a time, performing 12 hour shifts, and they enjoy a laundry, catered food, a bar, a gym, and a karaoke room. According to Allsea, the average crew member will walk up to 20 kilometers a day aboard the ship even before they arrive at the gym in their off hours. The ship doesn't ever actually shut off owing to just how difficult and energy intensive it is to get the entire thing roaring back to life after it goes offline, and even while it's in port, it requires dozens of people to be on board at any given moment. The ship's onboard navigation system allows it to construct a 360-degree radar-constructed view around the ship, and it carries a high-precision acoustic positioning system and other underwater systems to allow it to keep a highly precise view of the seabed. It can become semi-submersible, sort of squatting itself down into the water while straddling its indented payload inside its slot and offloading massive amounts of ballast in order to lift and transport weight onto its support beams. The ship is equipped with an immensely powerful onboard lift system able to pick up a full capacity payload a couple of meters off the ground or the level of the water, and it's equipped with several other large cranes, including one called a shear leg, which allows it to lift the welded steel jacket structure that affixes shallow oil rigs to the seafloor. It's got a pipe leg system called the Stinger that guides pipes to the bottom of the ocean. 
and it's backed up by two barges designed to support it. The Iron Lady measures 200 by 57 meters or 656 by 187 feet and can carry heavy structures into shallower waters when the pioneering spirit would run aground, while the aptly named Bumblebee stores and carries around the Stinger apparatus when it's not being used. It's equipped with a helipad that can host choppers as big as the Sikorsky S-92, and it can carry yet another 27,000 tons of undersea pipe on board, if anybody can figure out what to do with 27,000 tons of pipe. The pioneering spirit performed its first real-life lift as a working ship on August the 22nd, 2016. On that date, the ship performed its funky deadlift on a 13,500-ton offshore oil rig in Norwegian coastal waters off of the North Sea. The lift didn't go perfectly. The pioneering spirit collided with part of the platform during the operation, but the platform was going to be removed anyway, and the ship was mostly fine, so don't worry about it. Once lifted, the pioneering spirit carried the thing all the way to Lutlandlet in Norway, where it was dropped off for dismantling on shore. A few months later, the pioneering spirit performed another North Sea removal, getting rid of the iconic three-legged Brent Delta platform off the coast of Shetland. The ship lifted the 24,000-ton platform off of its support structure in the span of seconds, setting a world record as it did so, and even that only strained the pioneering spirit to about half of its overall lifting capacity. In the following years, the ship has performed all manner of oil rig installations and extractions mostly in and around the North Sea, but also off the coast of France, in the Baltic and Black Seas, and off the coast of Africa. In 2019, the Pioneering Spirit performed what was at the time among the heaviest offshore lifts in history on a 26,000-ton rig that's part of Norway's Johan Sverdrup oil field. It also performed its lightest lift to date in that same year on a measly 3,800-ton accommodation platform. It's worked on the Nord Stream and Turk Stream pipelines, and of course, it's posed for quite a few lovely photographs for all of us to be nerdy about. But that's not all that the All Seas Company can envision for Pioneering Spirit's future. With a new global focus on offshore wind power production, the ship is an ideal mechanism to install next-generation wind turbines, which are incredibly heavy and too big for most ships to handle. Pioneering Spirit can handle the complex tasks of transportation and installation that go far beyond the capabilities of most vessels, and until anybody else builds something of a comparable size, it'll be able to pick up quite a few contracts in a market consisting exclusively of itself. Not only that, but the ship's size insulates it from the harsh weather conditions that so interrupt turbine installation, and it can handle more jobs at a faster clip than installation campaigns that use other mechanisms to do the job. In broader terms, the pioneering spirit will be at the forefront of the global transition away from fossil fuels and toward renewables. As the highest capacity oil rig removal vessel in the world, it'll be responsible for undoing the decade's worth of installation and construction work that allowed global oil companies to run their offshore industry in the first place. So so that's the pioneering spirit, one of the biggest ships in history, a true record breaker, and the only vessel on planet Earth that can do what it does best. At the time of writing, the pioneering spirit is sitting in the port of Rotterdam in the Netherlands after having finished its most recent job off the coast of Mauritania and Senegal. There, it was laying pipe for an ultra deep water liquefied natural gas project at depths of up to 2,700 meters below the surface of the ocean. Its plans for a next voyage have not yet been announced, but by the time you're seeing this episode, we'd be willing to bet that it's already steaming off to yet another oil platform in need of a helping hand. And finally, there's the question of succession and identifying the next vessel that will take pioneering its place in the record books. Since 2018, All Seas has referenced plans to build an even bigger vessel, one that will allow the company to get in on the long and very expensive process of dismantling and removing the world's largest oil rigs. Its name? The Amazing Grace, and at a price tag of about $3 billion, it'll essentially be a bigger, badder rendition of pioneering spirit. When fully built, according to the All Seas then CEO, it would feature a lift capacity of 72,000 metric tons, one and a half times that of the pioneering spirit. But as of now, the Amazing Grace is just a plan on paper, and it's not likely to be built anytime soon. In 2020, the concept was shelved indefinitely, and at the time of writing, it hasn't yet been resuscitated. Until it is, it appears that the pioneering spirit will remain the most massive ship on the high seas, reshaping the world we live in, one oil rig at a time.